Hey, what's up, what's up, what's up, YouTube? So, I'm on my way to the compound, and I thought I'd do the review of this camera here, the 6010 action camera. Because I've got some people asking me the what settings I use on the camera, you know, just a little bit of info. So I did. I thought I would just make a little review about it. And this review will also include the gimbal that I uh, just recently unboxed. So it's going to be a two-in-one, a review on the, just so that you can see how they both work or work for me or how I use them. So right now, I don't have anything. I just, I'm just holding the action camera. Nothing just with my hand, nothing else stabilizing it. But I am using EIS, that is Electronic Image Stabilization. So I do currently have that um, on when I use the camera just to stabilize because I like to take uh, more videos of events or when I'm working uh, like you've seen if you've watched my previous videos on the channel. So I'm on the road. The camera seems stable enough but there's a gravel, gravel road that we will get into and I want to try and show you both with me holding the camera and then also using the the gimbal so as you can see right now i only have eis on the electronic um, image stabilization and i am recording on 1080p at 30 uh, fps um, i i like to toggle between 1080p uh, 30 30 fps and 1080p 60 FPS. I use the 60 FPS when I do more car events, when I'm at a car event, because sometimes you want to slow a video down. So uh, 60 frames per minute obviously gives you more frames. So it makes your slow motion uh, section even much, much more smoother. I'm getting overtaken. The uh, Bima overtaking me. So yes, I am using a... 1080p at 60 uh, fps when i take car events it will use a bit, a bit more space than the 1080p at 30 fps that will use less space so i toggle between the two depending on what i'm i'm recording and as well sometimes you depending on where you actually upload your videos there's no use going higher than 30 fps because most social media platforms actually take your video in as 30 fps they convert it to 30 fps so okay guys so i just turn off eis um we will see if there's really that much difference on the road here but i wanted to do this because i'm about to enter the gravel road towards uh the compound so there we will see a little bit of bumpiness with EIS turned off and then with EIS turned on and then with the gimbal turned on. So right now we're still on the road. And the FOV guys, the field of view, I normally turned it off, but for this video I am actually using middle. So if you want to see how it is when you are running it on off, you can just look at my previous videos after I have unboxed this uh, 6010 action camera because most of the videos, actually all of the videos after that were recorded on this and FOV was turned off. So currently I'm using middle. It also has wide and narrow. So I'm currently using middle at the moment. Okay guys, so I am about to turn into the gravel road now. So EIS is currently turned off. So I am not using, there is another setting, they call it um, distortion correction. So I'm not using that. I'm not too familiar with it. EIS, I'm familiar with it. That's why I am using more of it. So now I'm on the gravel road, guys. So 
So I'm gonna go more onto the bumpier side. As you can see, the other cars are going on the less bumpier side. Okay, guys, now I have EIS 10 on. Let's see how it will look now on the Bravo. So still holding the phone with my hand. So this is with EIS. I will now head on to the smoother side. Now I'm gonna put the camera in my on my gimbal and let's see how that one goes. Okay guys. So we are now back and we are now on the gimbal. Let's see how that one goes. So we are on the gimbal and the EIS is currently turned on on the action camera. We are on the bumpy side of the road over here. Hey guys, so okay, we're on a little bit more bumpier road now heading towards the compound I don't know if you can see far away the sports ground there's some soccer going on I still wanna one day put in sound for them if they've got a tournament so that we can just have fun with the community out there you know so here I have the action cam guys, so I just wanted to show you the settings I was talking about. So as you can see there at the bottom, the camera is recording in 1080p, 30fps, that is the setting I mostly use. If I'm not using that, then in here I would select uh, 1080p at 60 fps so that is another setting that i use when i plan to slow down like do slow motion of videos i would use that one um and i feel like this 1080p fps and 2.7 k 30 fps i still want to try that um because i see it seems like it uses the same uh, amount of space so i'm yet to use it but i will try it in one of the videos in future but at the moment i'm using just this two the 1080p uh, at 30 fps and the 1080p at 60 fps and then if you go back we come to this is what i use the eis is currently on and that's what i mostly use right there if we go back you can see as soon as you choose eis the distortion correction becomes graded out you cannot select it uh, if we do focus for you guys you will see it is grayed out white balance i use auto exposure settings i use auto metering I use average metering i'm not too sure what those are sharpness i'm using middle and then video quality i use high i saw i put it on auto i don't want time marks record audio it's obviously turned on and then field of view i'm currently using middle i told you guys that if it's off it seems like it's on it's on wide I don't know if there's a difference between off and wide but I currently at the moment I've been using middle but the previous videos that I have on the on the channel they have been on off but the one that's on the road that's 
middle so if you want to know the difference you can just watch one of my previous videos you will see it on off and then this video here uh, was shot in middle so those are the video settings guys um let me see if i can do i don't normally take pictures with it but i am using 20 mag on the size i use 20 mag and there we've got distortion correction again so i over here guys i really didn't do much settings here because i it's rare that i actually take pictures with this i usually just take videos and then i take pictures with my phone okay guys so on the gimbal i have now attached the camera to the gimbal and i've also put in the cord that will charge your action camera while you are using it that's a nice feature i must say so if you turn it on You will see it just went on so again guys you've got four modes if this thing will focus on this you've got pf ptf l and pov so pf is pen follow pen and follow the ptf is pen tilt and follow the l is to lock it up and the pov is point of view so basically the camera faces where you turn the gimbal to face so now like this one it's currently on pen and follow so whatever i do it will change as i turn this way but if i go down and i go up it will keep to the position that it's looking at so you can face it get the camera to face wherever you might need using the controller there the joystick over there you can face up face down um as you can see it's my the red the red button means charging so you can do that and then it will always face to the direction that you are looking or you are you pointed the camera to so the gimbal will always face there so if you do this to always face wherever it is so if we change the mood and say pen tilt and follow you will see now as soon as uh, let's let me just make this straight okay, maybe let me get the camera also a bit up Okay guys so the camera is almost like facing straight so now you can see you still have this movement as you turn the gimbal but then uh, you must check if I go down the camera also faces down if I go up the camera tilts up so that is basically what that motion gives you so down and up so i'm not straight guys so that's why it's not showing like uh... so let me just get the joystick to face forward so i face down it tilts to face down i take it up it will tilt to face up so that's the tilt functionality that you are getting from it but the side to side it will also go with you so the next mode is to lock it so once you lock it it stays wherever it is so whatever movement you really do excuse me it just stays there so if i say face a bit up and i do that it stays wherever it is as soon as i do that it stays when i turn like that it stays wherever it is so this motion like you can see now i can't even turn the gimbal to face you guys so it locks it to exactly what what it's pointing to so that is the lock functionality over there and then if you go to point 
point of view this will go everywhere you go you turn the camera turns you turn that way the camera turns you face up the camera will face up you face down the camera will face down so this one the camera goes exactly where you face the gimbal the camera will go there so depending on what you're doing you might use because i found myself actually having to use the uh, different functionalities here for the application that I'm, I'm I'm using it for. So all this really tend to come into into being, you know, get to use them. It's not like they're just there for fun, but they really work. Even this functionality of the joystick really works. I've used that a lot of times. Okay, and then we have, uh, let's take it back to pen and follow that's the default then you have this over here so when you take it up it sort of like tilts the the camera the other way it tilts the camera so basically that's all that does that's all that does so i find the gimbal to be working guys i'm still uh trying to get my camera settings to work well with the gimbal but the gimbal does help i've seen a video of mine that has that was a little bit more smoother after starting to use the gimbal so the gimbal does work and but you get cameras that really are good in stabilization um where you, you buy you might not need a gimbal itself because they tend to get expensive when you start buying like proper gimbals but these ones are, this one is working so far for me and I cannot complain. I haven't used this button, it's more for sports mode uh, and to center, you can center your, uh, your, what's this, your gimbal like now what I just did. I'm turning it all the way there and then I'm gonna double click it and then it will center it. So I mostly use it for there but you can also use it for sports mode in order to get the gimbal to turn much quicker because as you can see it's following quite slow right now but as soon as you have it can you see how quick it turns when you not on it turns nice and slow nice and slow but as soon as you click on it it's a bit quicker so it, it's they call it sports mode but it gives you like a faster reaction for the gimbal to till 10 to do whatever it is that you want it to do so guys the other functionality you have with the with the gimbal is to download the app onto your phone and if you have the app downloaded on your phone you can for example just i just want to put this then in here so if you have if you have the app what you can do is you can set up your 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 gimbal wherever you need and then via the phone you can actually control the gimbal you can make it pan and whatever i think that will be good like for interviews and stuff like that i might be using it for interviews i'm not sure yet uh i've yeah i will i'll see i'll see but it's a nice feature to be able to control the gimbal while it's not close to you you know so there's that feature guys if you want to use it for the gimbal i haven't really used it per se i just tested it and it does work but yeah so that is the review guys of the 1610 action camera and this i steady 4 pro um pro 4 gimbal so far i'm liking the setup it's working okay for now i haven't been using it for too long but so far i can find the positives for this and yeah no issues so far with any of the devices so it is what it is hopefully good times of recording ahead so i hope you're doing good guys i hope you're doing well and going for those goals of yours and as for me i'll see you on the next one thank you for watching